Well, I'm Chris, and this is my 73 through 87 Chevrolet Intellitronics gauge cluster assembly video. We are going to have an installation video going over the wiring and the sensors on the truck. If it's not at the end screen or link in the description, I haven't made it yet. But I'm going to try to get this in the truck as soon as possible. They had a Father's Day special in 2023. And I got this for $385. We're going to do a quick unboxing, show you what you get with the kit. So I have a 1980 C30 Dually. My truck has a factory 350 small block and a factory four-speed manual transmission. So I've run over this a few times. The only red flags or issues I could see is if you have an LS engine in your truck. I do not have an LS engine. Please don't ask me any LS questions. I don't know because I don't have one in my truck. So everything appears to be clear to me in the instructions. Stay tuned for that installation video, but let's see what comes in this box for $385. So my biggest concern with this kit is how are they getting the speedometer to work? This screws over just like the existing speedometer cable and engages the driven gear. So you just screw this over just like the cable. It comes with a pigtail and it shows you where to wire it. We'll be wiring this up 100% in the installation video. I have a different tire diameter than stock. It says you can calibrate it. We'll find out later. So note that in the instructions, it says you have to use the provided oil pressure sender and temperature sensor. So you can't just use anything that you want. So eighth inch national pipe threads, this threads in by the distributor. You pull the old sensor out. We wire a ground to it and the original wire. And it says you have to use this sender for the kit to work right. So we will be using it. So the oil pressure didn't have a part number. There's the water temperature sensor they're using. So eighth inch national pipe threads, you're gonna take the wire off of your old one, put it on here. It says not to use Teflon tape. So I guess it needs to be grounded, half inch bushing. That should go in there just right. And we have a black wire. I'm pretty sure this is for the oil sender unit because it uses its own ground. So this is two-sided tape for the acrylic lenses. And this is a little spacer kit for the four little gauges on the left. Speedometer, tachometer, your four little gauges, very cool. We're not gonna take this out till we're ready. So one important thing on your fuel gauge, you have a range. This one is already preset to the zero to 90 ohms for General Motors. It's in the instruction manual, check it out. So these are your acrylic pieces. These are part of the kit, you have to use these. And you see it's just smoke plastic or plexiglass, very cool. So I went with this because it has a lifetime warranty. So if it ever screws up or LED goes out, you just put it in a box, mail it back to them, and hopefully they'll fix it for free. Even if they charge a little bit, that's fine with me. So we have it together like this because I want to show you that some of the screws in this bezel go into the cluster. And what we're really trying to show here is that this bezel sits on top of the acrylic lens. It sits on top. There's no gaps right here. It's touching it. It's on there. On the vehicle, you're going to take this black piece off first. With some JB plastic weld, we're gonna fix busted out little chunks. And we're also gonna fix a blown out hole because the screw will not hold that. So I didn't film any of the removal because it only took me about three minutes to get that black piece off and about a minute and a half to get this piece off. There's one, two, three, four screws on. You'll figure it out. Don't be scared to pull on this. You're not gonna rip the speedometer cable out. You need to pull it out so you can get some room in there. You're gonna reach in there with two fingers and you're gonna unplug it. It's very easy. And then on the speedometer cable, you're gonna to have to remember to put that tab down real low and then just push it down and pull out. You'll get it out. You're not gonna damage anything. Don't worry about it. We have a quarter inch socket. So we have five quarter inch head screws. I would recommend you do it by hand so you don't damage and rip something out of there. The lens can come out now. We, so a little FYI, when your lens has that yellow in there, it's deep embedded. And most likely it's trash. This piece is plastic thin, kind of delicate. Hopefully it washes off and we don't have to paint it or nothing, but you have to use this piece. This is part of it. So if your gauges are all there and original with needles, this is worth money to somebody. Somebody needs it. Don't be a hoarder and wrap these up. Well, I'm going to save them for another pickup truck project. Don't do that kind of crap. Just List them on Marketplace or offer up. Sell them to somebody else that needs them. Quit hoarding parts. People need to stop doing that. Carefully remove all the gauges. All this stuff looks super beautiful. I originally did not want to do this kit. I wanted to do the tachometer conversion, but they raised the price on it now. It's more expensive than this kit. I think that kit was like $430. So imagine you buy the conversion. You got this brand new gauge that stands out with a brand new orange needle. And I just didn't want to take that risk. 
Okay, I think the speedometer has some screws on the back. No, it does not. So does it just pull out? It just pulls out. Let's get the printed circuit board off. Okay, so your little indicator lamps, 194 bulbs. So if your printed circuit board is in decent shape like this, it's worth money. I'm gonna sell it with the gauges, but we have to get these little clamp things off or whatever these are. They're okay. All right, kind of push one side in. All right. Showing you the importance of taking your time and getting this stuff off carefully because I'm going to be able to sell this and make money. I'm going to put this on offer up for $100, everything I don't use off of this, and I guarantee you I'm going to sell it. Somebody's going to buy it with a smile on their face. So my cluster housing is 100% stripped. It has nothing on it, just plastic. So as far as the housing modifications, if you had a clock in there, you kind of see a circular shape. It would have a raised circle. You're going to cut that back one inch. And then these two studs, the instructions say there might be three studs. All you're doing, one inch, mark it, one inch, mark it, and cut it. And I don't put my face in my videos because I cannot stand somebody talking to the camera, blah, 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 when they're trying to show you how to do something like this. So that's the mods to get the circuit boards in here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this square completely out because we're gonna have a bunch of wires coming out of the back. Get these comments. Do not do what he's doing in the video. He's compromising the structural integrity of the cluster. So then we're gonna get the little bag that looks like this. So we have the lower circuit board, top circuit board. We're doing that step right there. Take one of your machine screws washer make sure this is in the correct orientation this is your top board spacer and to the bottom board another washer and then this nylon nut and we got to thread that thing all the way down you know that's going to be fun so on the truck the gauges are a little bit higher on top that's all it is a little spacer kit you just need to lightly, lightly snug that up. Don't damage your circuit boards. Okay, so it's lightly snugged up. We know that because we can still spin it a little bit. See how well this fits. Beautiful fit. Perfect. So all the circuit boards lay down in the cluster housing. Perfect, beautiful fit. And we've now converted this to a digital dash. Awesome. I'm not sure if the instructions want you to use the factory lens. There's no way on earth that I'm putting this back on. We don't need that piece at all. We do need this piece. It's been cleaned and washed. And we have issues where it doesn't sit flush right here. And of course we have to cut that out. So we're gonna need a Dremel. Just flip it over and you can clearly see how far you need to go to cut that little hole out. So we're using a Dremel stylo, cut it out with that. Now we're gonna switch to the little sandpaper. The next issue we're having is up there. You can see how it's hitting that circuit board. So I had to wash this multiple, multiple times in bleach soap to get it clean. Have our little repairs right there with JB plastic weld. So this is the original bezel off of my 1980. I just scrubbed it a bunch of times with bleach soap, went back and fixed that with some JB plastic, and then we sprayed it with flat black duplicolor. Now this is where we're gonna take a turn and we're gonna do things my way because I want this thing to be beautiful. So this piece right here, we cut the circle out and we had to trim some little holes in it for stuff on the circuit board that was trying to poke up. Now this plastic piece sits flush all the way down it's not bulged up see it was bulging up right there and we also cut this corner out right there to make it fit now this 
piece sits down flat. So notice I went back and I put these two green lenses here. I'm not sure what the little turn indicators are gonna look like. So putting those just in case, and plus we don't have a hole on our dash bezel. So if you pop those off, we're gonna put a dab of hot glue and we're not gonna be done yet with this hot glue. We're gonna use it somewhere else too. That's all you need, just a little bit. Beautiful. So here's the fork in the road. This is gonna be controversial to some people. This is the way I'm doing it because I want mine to look awesome and look super clean. It wants you to put the black piece on like that and then put the lenses on, telling you to use some double-sided tape, I guess to stick these two small ones. And then it's telling you to put this factory lens over everything. That doesn't make any sense. That is bull crap. I'm gonna call it like I see it. It sticks everything up too high. It makes no sense to do that. And I know why they did it because on the automatic trucks, you have this window right here with the little gear selector. And if you don't put this lens back in there, you have a hole in your dash. So you see why I put the little green lenses in there? Because we have signal lights on our dash. And there's that hole right there for your gear selector. See how the little gear selector window goes right here? But on a manual transmission, it's taped off and it's just blacked out. So it doesn't hurt me in any way. I don't need to run the lens. See how they had a piece of black electrical tape on it from the factory? So if you had an automatic, are you willing to give that up to make it look better? If I had an automatic, I would cut this little piece out, make some kind of bracket for it. And definitely keeping that gear selector. That's why in the beginning of this video, I said that the dash bezel was actually sitting on this and touching it because that's all the room that it gives you. So if you put two pieces in there, it's sticking up too high and it's, just a bunch of crap in my opinion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hot glue these pieces to the dash bezel. It sounds totally stupid, but it's not. That's it screwed down and you see that we barely have enough room for that lens to fit. Putting two of these in there, it may work, but in my opinion, it's not right. See, this one doesn't even slide in there. We have to lift it up just a little bit. And even with just this one lens in there, it sticks up a little bit. So we're gonna hold it up right there. And then we're gonna put some dots or a bead, whatever you want, and hot glue it to it. I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of tape on it. It's giving you ideas in case you're one of those people that gets weirded out and scared and freaks out when you're doing stuff like this. Don't worry about it, just put this stuff on there. Let's test it out one more time. Okay. All right, looks good. Glue it. Put some in there like that, just like we're welding. Beautiful. Beautiful. Make sure it's not coming in. Beautiful. How many times is this guy gonna say beautiful? This guy says beautiful one more time. I'm out of here. Check it. Beautiful, man. If you've never used hot glue before, you're gonna have to hold it in place for a few minutes. That glue takes a little while to dry. So we got them hot glued in there to the bezel. And if anybody wants to talk crap, say this is stupid. Hold on, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Look at that. Okay, yeah, real stupid on. Huh? That looks beautiful. Find your five shortest screws and we're gonna go ahead and screw this down. Just snug it up. Do not over tighten this, you're gonna bust it. As soon as you start feeling any resistance, just stop. Man, I just went through that thing. And look at that, I just busted that. I'm telling you, man, you gotta be careful with this stuff. All right, so this is all secured in there now. We have our little green indicators in case we want to use those signal lights. It's all screwed down. This came out really cool. I went ahead and marked all the wires because I wanted to make sure I wasn't going to have any extra. The only one I have extra is the check engine light. So we cut the giant hole out. It's going to make this wiring so much easier. So don't hate me. We're not running any power to this in this video, but we are going to stick it in there. Let's check that out. Installation video coming. Wire it up. This gets stuck back in the truck. And then this, look at that, it fit together so freaking beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna be hunting down all the correct screws for the installation video. I went ahead and painted this little piece down here too. Very nice. This cluster is tightened down to that bezel. It's screwed in like it's gonna go in on the truck. And we barely had enough room for those lenses. So we did not use our factory lens. And remember, if you do, you're going to have issues with your gear selector. I'm going to get a little piece of plastic, paint it, hot glue it. 
back there and you'll never notice it because the factory just put a piece of electrical tape. So this is a 1980 Custom Deluxe dash bezel. That's how it came from the factory. It was black plastic, didn't have any aluminum chrome. Okay, the letters were white on there. Probably just gonna leave it alone. It looks brand new. Came out a million times better than I thought. And we're gonna find out what color did I get? If you know me or you think you know me, what color do you think I would've picked? There's white, blue, red, green, and teal. So we'll have the installation video doing it all on the truck. If the video is not at the end screen or in the description, I haven't made it yet. Other than that, this thing came out beautiful. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.